This month, we demolish and then rebuild a caboose, install a side fence, and put in some of the interurban line and give it a test. The caboose tale begins in 2008 when I stumbled across a plan of a caboose on an online forum. I wish I knew what road name the design came from, but it captured my interest. It's a very petite wooden-sided caboose with a steel frame and really close truck spacing. It inspired teenage me, so I took apart an old Athern Santa Fe caboose for the doors and windows and then set to work. Many years later, I never really figured out how to do the roof, and it warped pretty badly from being poorly stored. It was sad, and I wanted it to look its best. I also wanted to challenge myself by recycling all that I could, but also seeing what a state-of-the-art kit bash I can do in 2023 looks like, using as much of the original kit as I could. The original caboose used evergreen car siding that was too thin, so it warped. So I bought a thicker version at the hobby shop a while ago, and brought it out for this project. I carefully measured out the old caboose, and drew new walls with calipers and a scale ruler to rationalize the dimensions. Then I popped out all the old windows and plopped them in the new walls. Since the original caboose had grab irons, I decided to up the game and do them all correctly as well. I made them from 22 thou stainless steel wire I bent with some needle nose pliers. It went pretty fast, and I suggest experimenting with it yourself if you need more grab irons and you don't want to buy any more. Using a piece of scrap styrene as a spacer, I glued them onto the body with CA glue. I salvaged the original underframe using an X-Acto chisel blade and then glued it onto the bottom of the new caboose. The roof befuddled teenage me, but I found out by scribing and snapping two more pieces of the car siding, I could get a remarkably clean roof line that already has board detail on the underside of the ends for additional realism. Real caboose roofs of the period were made of tongue and groove beadboard covered with roofing material. I salvaged an old MDC wood caboose cupola to make the roof. Next, I added little pieces of strip styrene and measured distances on the roof to hold the roof lock. Using calipers, I measured the dead center of the roof and then marked the width of the cupola opening. I then drilled holes and used nippers to remove the inside scrap piece. Next, a couple of scrap pieces of styrene and a figure to suggest an interior. The roof walk was from the parts bit, most likely Accurail. It was glued in place. The cupola is still loose for future access. Even though the plan called for closely spaced trucks, I realized only then I'd welded the underframe with glue off-center from where it was supposed to be. So after having and hawing, I grabbed another one, this time an Athern 40-foot boxcar underframe, and diced it into pieces and put it underneath the car. I kept the original Athern caboose coupler pockets, however, since they're longer. The new bolsters were also spaced more widely, closer to a rebuilt PRR N6 cabin. I then used my favorite caboose trucks, Walther's Leaf Spring Andrews trucks. Much better. It looks nicer with the wider truck spacing, and now it lets me have space for the air brake equipment, too. Then it was time for paint. For years, my favorite caboose color remains Rust-Oleum's Summer Squash. It's a nice dry yellow. That was sprayed on, followed by True Color Santa Fe Caboose Brown for the underframe and ends. I did a black roof for a first pass, but it'll be getting a brown roof to match the ends soon. The next project is one that's only half done in this video, ballasting the photo curve. I don't have anything to teach you in the ballasting department, but I had to use more because of the super elevated curves than you'd use without it. To reduce wallet damage, I used cheap black cinder ballast to represent older ballast from decades ago, and then topped that with Arizona Rock and Mineral Company Santa Fe Pink Granite Ballast on top of it, held in place with full strength tight bond 2 glue underneath, and layer upon layer of Mod Podge matte medium until everything was glued down. I still need to paint and weather the track to blend it all together. Once I cleaned up the track, I tested out my new F45. It runs like a dream. It was time to build the signature structure facing the new plaza. In every sketch of the town, I've included this Georgian-era cafe, which I wanted to fully detail the interior to draw your eyes in. Two buildings in Guaymas stood out to me in particular, and I wanted to create something inspired by them to adorn an important corner of the layout. I sketched out the facade of the building on some paper, and then began cutting 8th inch thick styrene to get the four exterior walls and floor. Sawing got us all the door openings, followed by trim around each opening matching prototype photos. It'll make a great addition to the plaza, but it wasn't the only thing happening here. I got the first stretch of the interurban line wired up for operation. Well, not the overhead wire yet. I also scored this 19th century stone and stucco building to be a future parts warehouse for the engine terminal for just a dollar at a train show. It'll be featured in a future episode as I rebuild and super detail it. Also for a couple of bucks, I bought some old Lima catenary poles as stand-ins to get a feel for what the future overhead wire will look like. I positioned it and then rethought the car barn and terminal a few times before landing on this handsome angled version, 
Both main structures will be late 1920s Art Deco board-formed concrete. Also another quick update, the final house atop the hill got its roof. The next major project was developing a prototypical slide fence for the rock cut at the base of the mesa. This shot in Avo Canyon, New Mexico shows off a Santa Fe style installment with wires hung horizontally from modified wooden telegraph pole cross arms. If the wires broke or made contact with a rock fall, it would activate a signal ahead in both directions until an in-person inspection reset the slide fence. Can't have boulders blocking the main, so it was a natural choice. In this case, I used Walther's electric poles combined with Rick's Products cross arms mounted to the poles. I then spray painted them a dull brown, dry brushed highlights onto them, and then painted the insulators a metallic bottle green. Alexander determined the scale spacing with pipe cleaners and then glued the finished poles in place. A couple days later, I came in and laboriously put in the Easy Line Lycra thread. It took a couple of hours to thread most of the insulators. The line was indeed easy to work with, and the finished result is barely visible. Oops. I didn't realize just how perfectly it would blend in with the rock formation color. It's a neat detail that'll add some realism to any geologically iffy rock cut on your layout. More progress to come as I finish laying the inner urban line, begin scratch building the car barn and substation, and consider what bridge I should procure to span the estuary. This has been Inner Urban Era. I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you in the comments. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and definitely check out the Patreon for all the behind the scenes and the sneak previews that are coming up soon.